الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلقنا وعلمنا ما لم نكن نعلم الحمد لله الذي خالق السماوات والأرض يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير أحمده سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He Allah who created us and taught us that which we knew not All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of the heavens and the earth the creator of everything between the heavens and the earth the creator of us all he is the one who gives life and takes life and he is the one who has the power to do whatever he wishes we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank him for his blessings, his favors, his bounties upon us. I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his servant and final messenger. Allah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Qur'an about this life that He has given us and the purpose behind it. He says, It is He, Allah, who created death and life so that He may test us to see which one of us is the best in conduct, how well we behave, how well we fulfill our obligations unto our Creator and unto each other. Allah has rights and so is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala People have rights. Today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, just as a reminder, each one of us we have rights and people should try as much as possible to fulfill those rights. Let us remember this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he says Haqqul Muslim ala al-Muslim khams the rights of a Muslim upon another Muslim are five. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned first one, Raddus Salam. That when someone greets you, you return that person's greeting. In, in, in the world that we live in today, and even among Muslims, 
Sometimes we begin with kalam qabla salam. We start talking before even greeting one another. And so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us that we, we need to greet. And when we greet, people should try to return the greeting. A better greeting or one similar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَإِذَا حُيِّيتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رَدُّوهَا When you are being greeted, if someone says Assalamu alaikum to you, return his salam with a better one. Maybe you can say Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Or return similar, something equal to what the person has said to you. We, we, we have developed a custom that only people whom we know, we greet them. And those whom we do not know, they don't receive any greetings from us. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, Ayyul Islam khair? Which Islam is the best? Or what is the best about Islam? And he said, Tut'imu tu'am wa taqra'u salam ala man arafta wa man lam ta'arif. The best about Islam is that you take care of those who are in need. And that you send salam to those whom you know and those whom you do not know. And this is what we have been told by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the first right. When someone greets you, return that person's greeting, Raddu salam. Second, Qiyadatul Marid. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that you should try your utmost to visit the one who is ill. In a hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, Udu al-marid wa at'imu al-ja'i wa fakku al-aniya. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Visit the sick, visit the one who is ill, feed the hungry, and free the captive. And so, a Muslim has a right upon another Muslim. If he or she is sick, a Muslim should make it their, you know, have that intention to visit the sick. I know that we are living in the, uh, the time of Corona and uh, people, uh, you know, are very afraid in terms of too much intermingling, mixing. But under normal circumstances, we are being told that we must visit the sick. And if you can visit, at least pray for that person. Try to make dua when you hear about the person being ill. And one of the, the dua that the Prophet taught us, he said that you make this dua, Allahumma rabban nas. أذبل بأس إشفي أنت الشافي لا شفاء إلا شفاءك شفاء لا يغادر سقما O Allah, Lord of mankind remove the disease remove the illness remove the harm cure that person 
You are the cure. You are the one who grants healing. There is no cure except your cure. There is no healing except the healing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Grant him, grant that person healing that leaves no traces of the disease. Look how powerful. Pray for each other. Pray for people. People may be sick and they never tell you anything. But always keep people in mind. They have a right over you. Pray for them. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Thirdly, ittiba'ul janaiz, that you follow the funeral procession. And I, I want to come back to that one, inshallah. The fourth one, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, ijabatu da'wa. When people invite you, and as Muslims, we are supposed to invite each other to that which is good. If people invite you, accept their invitation. You know, in, 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 in the world that we live in today, uh, we, we have a, a class system. And only when a certain category of people invite us, we accept their invitation. And when others invite us, we don't accept their invitation. Let us each one look at ourselves. How often, without any reason, we have declined people's invitation just because they are not, maybe not our family, not our friends, or not, they're not in the same category with us. And, and so we need to be careful. If people invite us to good, we need to make sure that we accept their invitation. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, they have a right over you. The fifth one, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Tashmeetul Atis, that when one sneezes, that you respond to his sneezing. And we are being taught how this ought to be done. When one sneezes, he says, Alhamdulillah. We don't do like other people. We glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Teach your children this. Not just bless you and thank you. When your child or you or any one of us, when we sneeze, we say, Alhamdulillah, all praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything else could have happened at that moment of sneezing. And when one hears, he should respond. Allah. May Allah have mercy on you. Look at the beauty of Islam. We pray for each other at every moment. You, you, you say to the person who sneezes and say, Alhamdulillah, may Allah have mercy upon you. Allah. And it doesn't end there. But that person who re received that prayer from you because he sneezed, he says, Yahdikumullah wa yuslibalakum. May Allah guide you and set your affairs right. Such beauty in it that you remember each other and that you pray for one another. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, the, the third one that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, is Ittiba'ul Janais, the, the following of the funeral procession. You know, living in this period for the last two years, 
there has been some restriction and, and so people have not uh, uh, been able to go th this was government restriction state restriction uh, city restriction so even if you wanted to go to pray the janaza for you know for someone you were not allowed to so we, we, are, we are talking on the normal situation. Salatul Janaza, it is a communal obligation. Fard kifaya, meaning that it is obligatory on the community to offer Salatul Janaza for any Muslim who has passed. And we tried our best during this uh, pandemic to make sure that every Muslim who passed and we were uh, aware of it to make sure that we give them that janazah prayer and that they were buried uh, according to the Islamic tradition. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that there are great rewards in offering the funeral prayer. In a tradition, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man salla alayhi mi'atun min al-muslimina ghufira lahum. Whoever is prayed upon by a hundred Muslims at his funeral, he will be forgiven. So let us not think about ourselves in terms of the rewards right now. Think about the person who has passed. Our dear brother today, mashallah, he will have a lot of us praying for him. But not so many are fortunate. Because when we think about Geneza, sometimes we only think about our immediate, we think about people whom we know about, we think about our families. But we must think about Muslims in general. That if you can, you are able to make haste about it, go pray, join the funeral prayer. Make sure that you are there to pray for others. It should not be limited to our friends and our families and people whom we share the same uh, status with. No, it should be for everyone. Everyone should be given this right. And so when there's a large gathering that prays, and here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said 100, when there's a large gathering that prays for that person, you are helping that person to be forgiven of his or her sins. In another tradition, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, مَا مِنْ رَجُلٍ مُسْلِمٍ يَمُوتُ فَيَقُومُ عَلَى جَنَازَتِهِ أَرْبَعُونَ رَجُلًا لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا إِلَّا شَفَعَهُمُ اللَّهِ فِيهِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said A Muslim man does not die while 40 men pray over him and those 40 men do not associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens? We, those 40 men now become intercessors. And if they intercede on behalf of that deceased, it is said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not return their intercession. Allah will accept their intercession. So now, now by praying the janazah of people, you become intercessors. So it's not, it's not only about us. 
It's about the deceased. Wouldn't you like to intercede on behalf of your friend? Wouldn't you like to intercede for someone whom uh, you don't know or someone whom you know? That's what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has advised us. And then it comes to the incentive, the reward. Is there reward? We all want reward. We all want when we do something, there's some incentive. And so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, whoever attends a funeral until he offers the prayer will have one qirat of reward. And whoever attends until the burial is done will have two qirat of rewards. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, what is the meaning of this qirat? And he said, one qirat is like Jabal Uhud, the mountain of Uhud. Those who had the opportunity to, to see the mountain of Uhud, it's a, a long range of mountains. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that you will have the reward of one qirat for offering the Salatul Janazah. And you will have double of it for following the procession and making sure that that person, you stay there until the person is buried. We all want rewards. We all, all look for incentives. And so it, it, it is not just benefiting the deceased, but we are benefiting ourselves. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, these are rights that people have over us, whether they are our families, our friends, or they are not any of those. A Muslim has rights over another Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to fulfill our obligations unto one another. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمن المؤمنات من كل ذنب فاستغفرون إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رضوان الله عليهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says to us frequently remember the destroyer of pleasure and what is the destroyer of pleasure the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says death. Always think about death. Think about the time when each and every one of us will return to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. لَقَدْ أَمَرْنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وعمر وثمان وعلي ونستة الباقين المبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تج اجعل في قلوبنا غل للذين امنوا ربنا انك رؤوف رحيم اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا الا غفرته ولا هما الا فرجته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة الا قضيتها ولا مريضا الا شفيته ولا ميتا الا رحمته اللهم تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي ذكم لا لكم تذكرون فشكر الله على نعمه واذكروه على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون قم السلام